All right. Welcome, everyone. Hello. My name is Kyung At Lee, and I use she and her pronouns. Um, I work as the Assistant Director of International Programs at the University of Pittsburgh, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this Hasselbein Global Academy virtual summit session entitled The Effective and Successful Leader. Please note that this session is being recorded. Our presenter today for the session is Lori Harris. Lori is co-founder and managing partner of Harry White Cell Consulting LLC, a global woman-owned small business and Hobson certified human resources talent management consulting firm headquartered in Wilmington, North Carolina. As a talent management executive, Lori provides world-class services in organizational culture effectiveness, talent optimization, executive leadership and team development and coaching, people data expert, and is an author and thought leader. Lori holds a BA and MBA in organizational development and business management with multiple professional and industry accreditation and certifications supporting her 30 plus years of expertise and successful experience. Thank you to Lori for being with us today and let's go ahead and get started. I'm very honored to be here, everyone, and I'm going to jump right in to the presentation and I'm going to share my screen and we will get started. So you've got my introduction, but I'll give you a little bit of fun about me. I, at one point long ago, was the team captain for the USA Women's National Basketball Team and for many years traveled all over the world representing the United States of America for basketball. And so that's just a little bit of tidbit about me, but it is honestly where the seeds of leadership were planted for me. So I think it's quite relative to today and what we're going to be talking about. The first thing I want to share with you today is what is it and what are our thoughts when we think about the effective and successful leader? And so leaders who have higher cognition, and we're going to talk about cognitive leadership model here in a second, they act from an authentic sense of clarity, purpose, and intention. They have higher levels of influence, accelerated value. They optimize growth and opportunity, not only for themselves, but for their teams, their organizations, their stakeholders, and their communities. So as a leader, and if you're not yet, or if you don't consider yourself a leader, think of yourself as a leader as it relates to these words and this, this definition here. What is your vision of success? So many of you I know are students, so maybe your success might be short term and it might be related to your education. Or it might even be longer term in that, or even short long term in that you're looking at your career, but you're also looking at that legacy side of it in that what is your career gonna offer you in your life? And, and the next thing is, how effective is your leadership? So go ahead and take a moment, and I'm gonna jump back and forth here because I'm curious. Go ahead and take a moment and put in the chat some of your thoughts around that. Again, positioning yourself as a leader, because many of you are, you influence others, and you provide clarity and sense of purpose, and you're intentional. What is your vision of success? In this present state, where you are now, what's your vision of success? What, what does that mean and what does that look like to you? Does anybody want to go ahead and put that in the chat? Finding out what my pat, where my passion lies, optimum participation, being in a place where you're able to help others. Beautiful. Good mor morale. Mm hmm Definitely. Being able to enjoy my career path, learning how to handle stress. So there's resilience. Yes, engagement, being able to mentor others. Leadership, good. Providing for others, beautiful. These are all deep-seated, intentional opportunities for you to create value and to create growth. And 
one of the things I want to share with you is when it comes to passion, I want you guys to think about passion as the energy that's going to fuel your motivators and your strengths. Passion is that it's pure energy. It is the thing that triggers us and our bodies to give us those serotonins, those dopamines, all that good stuff that creates that joy, that creates those experiences that keep us coming back. And it also fuels those neurons that help us really manage the the more positive things in life and getting better consequences because passion again by fueling motivators and fueling strengths it, it enables us to really have intention and it enables us to really realize our purpose which affords us that life's calling and that life's calling can lead us into things such as this i love that optimum participation too by the way uh, it leads us into these things such as having ethics and and enjoying the experiences of our career. And by the way, enjoying your career means you're finding that we're going to talk about 20% of joy, but also how are you mitigating and managing the challenges that are going to come against you and the adversities that are going to come that are unknown. And then being resilient throughout all of that. So this, these are wonderful responses. I want to make sure that I include everyone here. So looking out for fighting for the interest and welfare of others as opposed to my own. That's selfless. That's service above self. That's beautiful. Wonderful stuff here, you guys. Surrounded by happiness from others. Yes. Creating influence and impact for those moments of joy and giving people those opportunities brilliant this is wonderful stuff being the best version of myself in order to inspire and support those around me powerful statement that is a powerful leadership philosophy statement right there beautiful good work you guys this is good i'm going to go back to my presentation and so let's move forward what i want you to think about here let me go back I apologize one moment I went too far what I want you to think about next is authentic cognitive leadership characteristics and again I'm gonna to get to this cognitive piece authenticity is the bridge to life's important transitions and is something that is never done but is work that it, that one is regularly called to do throughout life's journey so when we think about ourselves as cognitive leaders, we're self-actualized. We're aware of our strengths, our motivators, our limitations, and we manage our emotions well. Meaning that when we get frustrated and angry and we're dealing with things in the past, we're able to really look at those and assess whether or not they are worthy of our energy and attention or if we just need to be a, come from a place of gratitude and say thank you and move forward. Also, the anxieties that we get that are future state that you got to think about. All those unknowns and those things that come into the pipeline immediately and, and take us into sometimes those anxieties and future state. Those are things we've got to manage because they all create emotions. They all create a physical experience as well. Uh, your cognitive leaders are people focused and want to make tangible differences. You all spoke about that in the chat. You don't hold back and you teach from your your heart. And, and again, you're allowing that energy of passion to really drive those results that you're seeking. And you manage and share the passion and purpose. So that energy is shared and the purpose is definitely delivered and communicated repeatedly and intermittently so that people really understand and you create a, a foundation of trust and you're building, you're motivating and you're serving. And then lastly, you're humbled. You're humble in your approach. You, you, you bring to the table that compassion and that empathy when you do understand because you've been there, done that, and been in those shoes. But compassion that you're trying to imagine yourself in their shoes and that you're helping. Courageous. You know, courage really gives us the ability to lead greatly and to lead well and to lead thoughtfully. 
So don't hesitate. Even when we have fear, go ahead and take that deep dive and do a little bit of introspect and take a moment to really understand yourself. What am I really fearing here? And, and is this fear something that I should attend to? Or is it something that, that I should just set aside and compartmentalize because guess what? I don't know what I don't know. And maybe if I do jump in, things are really gonna come to the table and trusting that and, and encouraging and allowing hope to play out. So they value and they model this, they demonstrate these things. And it definitely folds out into giving that permission and sharing that leadership out and giving permission for others to do the same, which results in inclusiveness and the diversity of thought and experience and demographics and all those good things. It plays out in all kinds of ways. So in this slide, I'm going to be talking about the well-known traits of not so good leaders. And this is something cognitively that we as humans seem to naturally do instead of looking beyond that and what I call going above the line in my coaching. But this is something I want you guys to think about for a moment. These are things that we recognize often. We talk about it on social media. We also gossip about it in the workplace or at home. We often ruminate about these kinds of behaviors and, and issues. And sometimes it's not just others, but sometimes it's within ourselves. And if we're great leaders and, and knowing that we're gonna be human and we're all human, sometimes these things play out because of fear, because of triggers, because of distortion because of uh, the lack of maybe a, a conductive and conducive workplace. So it's all about them. These are, these are egotistical and arrogant, narcissistic kind of people. And by the way, all humans have narcissism at one point or another, but how they manage that and if they're doing it all the time and if they're doing it intentionally, it's not good. Poor communicators. We know that in this day and time, a lot of people are ghosting people. That's poor communication. Failing to set clear, clear vision for leadership. By the way, leaders set vision. And so it's going to be very, very important if your leadership is not reiterating the vision, if, if, it's, if you as a leader are not sharing that vision in all kinds of ways that aligns to those values, those, the mission, the vision, and that strategy it's gonna it's gonna be detrimental lack of integrity you know this is where people fail to demonstrate their values and it can make a definite negative impact on relationships on teams and on the culture of environments and does not support the team you know when we've got a leader who's absent and doesn't provide the adequate training or encouragement it definitely impacts the team and of course, to me, the most important is trust and building trust, sustaining trust, managing trust, and they dictate rather than empower. Those are very, very important attributes and characteristics in a leader. Lacks passion and commitment. Here's that word passion again, and, and I'm gonna relate it back to energy. So it's really that lack of focus on goals and clearly disengaging with the organization and culture. Uh, lacks enthusiasm, that can be a major detrimental impact. Lack of feedback and praise, that honor and recognition and celebration. When you catch somebody doing something great and good that's, that is absolutely aligned to whether it's the behaviors of values or it is the, the tactical and practical side of the job where you're executing strategy or a task or an activity well, those matter. It matters to say thank you. It matters to go ahead and say, Susie, I liked it when you showed compassion towards John today because it really gave him an opportunity to come above the line and not stay in that you know, depression that he had from losing a parent. Those are moments that truly make a difference 
and we really can afford co better collaboration and collective results. The fixed mindset is important as well. This is where the, the a leader is absolutely, oh, you know, I don't need to read a book. I don't need to go to a conference. I don't need to learn anything. And they don't feel they learn anything from mistakes and mistakes are bad. And we've been around people like that. And these hurt your organization deeply. So I'm gonna stop here and we're gonna get a little bit authentic here. Oh, I love this. Success for me is independence from the control of people I don't respect and the ability to support and help others. That is an interesting statement, Sprint. Definitely. Oh, this is from Sprint Phone. Sorry, <laughs> I don't see your name on there. So in the chat, what I want you all to do is think about these eight traits that I just talked about. And I want you to be authentic and I want you to get vulnerable with me. And will you in the, in the chat post any one of these topics that you feel that sometimes you do these things, you behave this way sometimes. It's all about me. I'm a poor communicator sometimes. I lack integrity sometimes. I do not support the team well. I lack trust. I lack passion and commitment sometimes. I don't often praise or provide feedback. I have a fixed mindset sometimes. Does anybody have the courage and are they vulnerable enough to share? Maybe you recognize, I find myself lacking trust. Yes, I find I have a fixed mindset sometimes. I do too, by the way. I get myself stuck in that mode and it keeps me stuck if I don't get out of it. Sometimes I take over too much. Exactly, communicating because I'm scared if people won't like what I have to say and they'll get upset. Excellent. I have fixed mindset and I get stubborn and overwhelmed. Absolutely, that's the physical result is the overwhelmed. Getting stubborn is the fear. And absolutely, and it, we'll talk about this in a minute. You guys are gonna love this stuff. Often find myself not providing enough valuable feedback. Good stuff, you guys. Aiden, good stuff. Excellent. I want to improve on welcoming feedback. This is good, you guys. Good stuff. Well, let's get back to the slides because we get to move forward. So if you would, I would love to have you guys go ahead and with these leadership traits, I want you now with the poll to list your top three. So take what you posted in the chat and if we can go ahead and let's go ahead and submit the poll and I'm gonna drop down and let's see what kind of results we get. Go ahead and select three ineffective or bad traits you are currently recognizing in leaders. Mm-hmm. You got 30 more seconds. Excellent. Anyone not yet done? Oh, excellent. It looks like everybody's finished. So we can go ahead and take a look at the results. It's all about them. Yes, this is often at the top of the list. And those egotistical and arrogant does not like their authority, their authority questioned. They lack self-awareness and emotional intelligence. And they lack communication intelligence as well. Poor communication, fails to set clear vision and goals for their team, does not keep the team updated, is a poor listener and unapproachable. Lack of integrity, 
these top three are often common so you guys are are right on target when it comes to understanding and being observant of leadership the great part about this is now that you know these eight traits going forward in your career you can always ask yourself did i do my best to support others did i do my best to show integrity today did I do my best to support the team? Did I do my best to, to trust? So you can actually take these traits of bad leaders and you can turn them into motivators for yourself to ensure that each and every day you're performing as a leader at your highest and best. These are excellent results, you guys. Good job. I appreciate your participation in this poll. Let me go back. I'm gonna share my screen again. And so I, I promised you that we would talk about cognition. And this is actually the model of cognition. And, and leaders who think cognitively are thinking high cognition. And we begin with a formula A to B to C equals positive consequences is proactive. If we, the formula of A to C is reactive and often negative consequences. So we're going to work left to right with this model. And what happens, and by the way, this is a cyclical model. It's constantly cycling. But what happens is, is we get a trigger. That trigger is some kind of event. It's world, it's people, it's experiences, history, future, and sometimes we cause it ourselves. And in those triggers, if we don't move forward into introspect and thought and analysis, validation, exploration, research, and we don't gather data, we are not able to challenge our attitudes, the rules, the demands, the beliefs, the images, and the meanings behind things so that we can make better decisions and ch sometimes change the value of what our existing belief is to something new and if we don't do that we are stuck in a, in some type of distortion and i'm going to share distortions with you in a minute but if you do spend time in thought and analysis and validation exploration discovery and play don't forget play it's wonderful but we want to be careful that we don't spend too much time there because then you'll be in a paralysis of analysis so as we move through B, we spend that energy and time, then we make a, a decision, we come to a conclusion and we make decisions and then we act on it. We begin to trigger the emotions and the physical outcomes and the behaviors. And within those, we definitely, again, if it's A to C, we're gonna have negativity. If it's A to B to C, we're gonna have those positive and healthy experiences and this is how the body builds neurons and this is also how the body deconstructs bad neurons bad habits so you definitely want to spend more time in this model making sure that you're getting going through the process of a to b to c and being more proactive about those things that you're taking in that the signals that you're absorbing and aware of and that you're absolutely allowing yourself to think about it, analyze it, explore it, play with it, get, get others to engage in it and ask for their information and their feedback. And then those other outcomes, those consequences of your emotions are healthier, the physical reactions are more positive because your heart can raise for good or for, for negative. And then also the behaviors are constructive and not self-defeating. And then that takes in and it pulls it back around and it triggers something else. This goes on a billion times a day with us. And it's very, very powerful for us as human beings. The important thing is, is not to stay stuck in distortion, which is these cognitive distortions, not stay stuck in overanalyzing something and also making sure that you formulate and make good decisions so that you're getting those outcomes that you are really expecting and desiring. 
And here's where I promised where I talked to you about the most common cognitive distortions that leaders often experience for themselves first and foremost, because remember, leaders are self-aware, but also for others that they're coaching, that they're advising, that they're mentoring. So black and white thinking, filtering, disqualifying the positive, jumping to conclusions, emotional reasoning, rigid rule keeping, catastrophizing, overgeneralizing, labeling, and there's two others that I want to mention to you, and that's shaming and blaming. These are all detrimental. These will keep you stuck. These will silo you. These will put you into fear. They'll just exas exasperate fear. So you want to make sure that you are identifying habitual ways of process beliefs to process beliefs, thoughts, and ideas that are often inaccurate or negatively based because we are conditioned, humans are conditioned through time from the people that we're around, the experiences that we have, the environments that we're in, all of that can condition our thoughts, our beliefs. We develop over time in response to these adverse events and can be, again, I talked about conditioned, but most importantly, they can be socially acceptable behavior because they become normed. And it doesn't mean that if they become normed that they're gonna be beneficial or they're gonna be a positive consequence. That's why you as a leader individually need to make sure that you're constantly in the, in the space of self-mastery and self-awareness so that you're getting your highest and best and most effective results and maximizing excellence as often as you can. So I'm gonna stop here really quick and I'm gonna give you guys a couple seconds here. And I'd like to ask you guys, of some of these distortions, what's maybe one of the distortions that you can relate to? Is it extreme thinking, the black and white thinking? Is it filtering when we're anxious and we commonly develop tunnel vision and we ruminate? Is it disqualifying the positive? Is it jumping to conclusions? Is it emotional reasoning? Is it rigid rule keeping? Is it catastrophizing, overgeneralizing, labeling, shaming, or blaming? What are some of the things that you, that maybe one of these things that you find that you relate to? For me, because my mind thinks so quickly sometimes and I move at such a rapid pace and I am such a strong, direct uh, leader, sometimes I jump to conclusions and I, ha and I constantly have to stay on top of that. Yes, yeah, I'm blaming yourself, shaming and blaming. Yes, rigid rule keeping, black and white thinking. Yes, yes. Yes, and it is dangerous in organizations. All of these can be very detrimental to the culture and to the productivity and to engagement. Being afraid to question the norms. Yes, <laughs> and that's where we get back to really working on courage because if we're not sharing our thoughts, we're not being diverse, we're not being inclusive. And this is where we really need to challenge ourselves because we add value. Our uniqueness, our experiences in life, our, our learning that we've had to date and that, that's constantly you know, evolving. But all of that is value. Our strengths, our motivators, all this is value. And we're coming from that perspective. And if we're not bringing that to the table saying, hey, can we take a moment and think about this? You mentioned this and I'm, I'm really struggling with that. Maybe you can help me. Positioning it so that it's not a direct attack, but that, hey, you know what? Something's not right here intuitively or my gut's just you know not working on this solution. Can we talk about it a little more? Is there, is there something else that we might be missing? So being afraid to question the norms, you know, that's going to come from you just getting more and more comfortable with your, with the way you communicate and, and also understanding that you add tremendous value to the organization. <laughs> you know what, you guys, a little laugh. 
I just noticed my graphic is is off. Are you guys seeing it correctly when it says Hesselbein Global Academy? Is it backwards for you guys? <laughs> I got to laugh. I got to laugh. You know how things go sometimes. You get so busy doing stuff. Oh, good. It's not backwards. It is correct. Good. <laughs> On my side, I'm going, wait a second. It's backwards. <laughs> Your answers were excellent, everybody. And now we're going to shift. We're going to shift our mindsets and we're going to move into the positive. So now that we've really focused on, as humans, we often go to this negative stuff. Now we're going to flip the switch. We're going to start as leaders. We're really going to start seeking out the good, the good in ourselves and the good in others. And to do that, we have to look at these most worked on behaviors. I'm a Marshall Goldsmith coach. I'm, I'm a certified international federation, coaching federation, PCC coach. And and these behaviors are most common behaviors in the workplace. And we talked about leaders in general, but I, I now I'm gonna get personal with you guys. And which one or two of these behaviors do you find yourself working on to be a more effective leader? And the reason why I position this as positive is because if you're working on these behaviors, you're self-aware. Self-aware leaders are authentically cognitive. So you're working in a higher state of cognition. And this is what we want with our leaders. We're not perfect human beings, but guess what? We are human beings that absolutely can be intentional and aware, and we can do self-mastery on becoming better each and every day than we were yesterday. Not that we're great, but that just each and every day we figure out something that we've got to work on and we go at it and we utilize it and we optimize those talents and those strengths. So again, and this list is 20 behaviors that are most worked on in the workplace. And as leaders, it's things like holding others accountable. That's a tough one. Sometimes people want to be liked and they feel like if they don't hold others accountable, they're not going to be liked. Focusing on the critical few issues instead of all of them. Uh, let's see here. Listen to different points of view with an open mind before giving your opinion. You know, that's something if you're like myself and you're mo you move quickly through things, sometimes you forget to open up. Sometimes you forget to stop and slow down and ask for others' input. And it's something that if nobody's, you know, being your friend and sharing that information with you, hey, you know what, you're moving, you're moving too fast, you're taking this too fast, Give us a moment to think about it and give our response. Those are great opportunities for feedback, right? So these are most worked on behaviors. They're often uh, outcomes of distortion that we just went through. And they're often with leaders, if we are self-aware and we are working on them, they are things that we can overcome over time and sometimes it takes days and sometimes it takes weeks and sometimes it takes years, but we can do that, especially if we've got the support of others. So which one or two you guys have had time to really read this list, let's talk about that in the chat. Which one or two of these behaviors do you find yourself working on to be more effective in what you do? And I'm gonna stop here and hopefully you grabbed one or two of those. And go ahead and place that in the chat. So treat others with respect. There we go, listening with an open mind. Love it, becoming more assertive and decisive. Yes, yes. Addressing conflicts sooner and becoming more decisive. Yes, excellent responses, yeah. How many of you have uh, are working on standing up to individuals who undermine teamwork? So what if you've got a bully in the workplace? How do you, yeah, being assertive, how do you manage that? How do you talk to them? What are the ways that you can mitigate this situation and coach them? Those are things that you wanna think about with each one of these most worked on behaviors.
And the reason why we want to do that is because we want to have great workplaces. And this is a model that comes from a fabulous book called The Great Workplace. And it talks about the dimensions of great workplaces. So what this also I'm showing you is when we have credibility, respect, fairness, pride, and camaraderie in the workplace, and we have that leader or that employee, and we're being managed and we're, we're, we're engaging and we're producing and we're collaborating with our colleagues, it is amazing that the culture of the organization, the norms of the organization are positive and they're constructive, meaning that you get higher return on investment, quicker, better, faster. You are, you're, a, you're more likely to be, have a higher competitive advantage in the marketplace. You're more likely to have a stronger brand equity, both internally and externally. Your stakeholder satisfaction, your customer and stakeholder experiences are more positive. And again, profitability, all of those things are on the positive side versus the negative side. And I, I want you guys to know that these all build on one another. It starts with you. And this is one of the reasons why we've got to think about how intentional and repeatable we are with cognitive leadership and that our positive behaviors play out in the workplace and in the teams and in the culture, in our sales approach, in optimizing talent. Remember, as leaders, we're always seeking to optimize talent. We're always seeking to hire the, and align the proper talent to that position. We want to make sure that we're executing the strategy in a timely, effective, efficient manner. We want to be collaborating for collective results and return on investment. And then also that customer and stakeholder experience needs to be just through the roof and positive. Why it matters most, building trust in the workplace through team building for leaders is critical. And, and I, I want you guys to think about this in a what if analysis kind of mindset. What if we place zero importance on leadership effectiveness? What if we choose not to invest in developing people in the organization? What if we knew we needed organizational change and talent strategies, but neglected to hold the necessary and often hard conversations to create positive and lasting impact? What if we realized our personal core values no longer or never aligned to the company that we're working for and their philosophies or to the job that I'm doing? What if, what if, what if there's no trust? Trust is foundational for commitment, for productive dialogue, for productive conflict, for accountability, and for collective results. And when we have disengaged, unengaged employees, we're costing the company three times the value of the salaried employee that we have that's disengaged or unengaged. This is why it matters most, you know, and these are statistics that come from Gallup um, and they're recent actually since the pandemic. And it's, it's quite detrimental and it's quite interesting to understand uh, as leaders, if we just flip this over from this negative to positive, it's amazing when we begin to talk about this with our teams and with our work, workforce and with our leadership team, as well as our colleagues and those direct reports. It's phenomenal what it does to the organizational culture and to productivity as well. All right, so with our next poll, we're gonna talk about what is the quality of trust, credibility, respect, and fairness in your current workforce. So if we can go ahead, I'm gonna stop here and we can pull up that poll and see what kind of rating we get. Let's take about 15 seconds to answer this poll.
on a scale. Rate the scale one to 10, one being low, 10 being high. The quality of trust in your workplace. We got a couple more. Almost done. We're at 90% of all of you. Excellent. Well, we've got, you know, seven or 33% at eight and a rating of eight. That's excellent. If you could, those of you that answered, put in, put in the chat, what makes your organization trustworthy? What makes your team, your leadership team trustworthy? Go ahead and post some of those things in the chat and your thoughts in the chat as well. Open and honest communication. Yes, absolutely. What else? What are some of the behavior? Respect. Yes. Mutual respect. Authentic. Yes. Respectful, engaged. Yes. Involved each other. So inclusiveness. Accountability, absolutely. There has to be accountability from leaders, absolutely. Shared common goals, beautiful. Authentic, yeah. Building rapport, yes, yes. These are all incredibly valuable. We can go ahead and stop sharing and, and drop the pull down. Good job, you guys. This is good work. Good thoughts. So what got you here will not get you there. And as leaders, I want you to remember this throughout your whole career because everything is evolving, whether you're changing a job, whether you've got a new team member coming in or a new employee coming in, whether you have, let's think, maybe there's a new project that came in the pipeline or, or maybe that you know there was something adverse and detrimental that, that happened. You honestly have to stay alert. You honestly have to be resilient and agile and adaptable because what got you here is not going to get you there. And it all starts with you. This is a framework that's it's really fun to play with. And I, I really want you guys to think about this. Uh, I want you to, you're going to get this, this uh, PowerPoint. You're going to get this PDF file. And when you get some time, spend some time outlining and beginning to document your authentic leadership persona. You can journal this, you can use this little sheet, but this is a framework to be more cognitive about who you are as a leader. This also is a framework that leads to you developing a leadership philosophy, which each and every time you begin to lead teams, and as you lead teams, you need to reiterate it, your leadership philosophy because it helps people better understand you. So in the first box, we talk about the narrative, which is also your life's calling or your, your, and it includes your purpose, which is intentions and objectives, your passion. We talked about that energy that motivates the, the path and the skills, those things that you have, the attitude, mental and emotional entity. This is big. Attitude is big that, um, that definitely is, it, it, pardon me, it in hers, I'm going to say this, I need to go to my notes here. Attitude, this emotional and mental uh, entity, it in hers, the character and characterizes a person. So this is what people see about you. This is where perception often is formed. It's in attitudes. Attitudes can change and they can be adjusted quickly. So this is important to write about for yourself. Hold yourself accountable to by writing about it. And this is your story. Um, your calling, I wanna go back to that. Your calling is about what you were born to do. It's the things that you notice, the, the signs and the signals and that bring you a lot of joy. It's the things you dream about, that you vision about, that you daydream about. Uh, your calling is also the things that you prioritize often. And it's also where you find your most creativity. And deeply, it's the things that you absolutely love. It's where you feel good. It's where you put your, your attention at. And it's 
it's the things that you do easily often because you love them so deeply and you were called to do those you were born to do those so this is kind of uh, one of those hierarchical type of formats that you can use to kind of build up and down from play with this play with this now play with this in the future when we talk about thoughts and beliefs i want to ask you are they conditioned and if they are are you challenging them and if not why not have you explored options have you researched and fact checked everything have you gotten input from those that you love and that believe in you that support you can you live with the consequences and do they align to your core values energy and words so when we're talking about energy remember we're talking about this is that passion now that we're building down into the things that we're documenting uh, this is about physical and mental well-being that that entity this opens what you express verbally in writing body language the way you support your thoughts and beliefs your narrative and your calling so this is that strength of the ladder right and then lastly your deeds and expression which include all of that communication we just talked about but do you demonstrate and frequently demonstrate the behaviors that align can others mirror this can they learn from this and and also do you find that there are similarities in your expression with others do you find differences in those expressions from others in that it allows you to grow and learn and create more value did you do your best to so this is again where once you begin to formulate this you begin to ask yourself did i do my best to serve my purpose to 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 work towards my calling did i do my best to apply the the, the level of energy to keep those motivators alive and to to optimize my strengths and my talents and my skills did i do my best to is one of the best questions you can ask yourself at the end of the day each and every day and it also will help you set your agenda for the next day you've got all these tactical and practical tasks but what about the behavioral things that are really going to exponentially maximize excellence for you so these are things to think about and this is a gentle framework for that and lastly this is just a generalized statement on effective and successful leaders is taking all that I just talked about and kind of compounding it into one big statement here. You're visionary, you're strategic, you're disciplined, driven, you're self-aware, innovative, ethical, civic minded. All these beautiful words play out to have that strong presence where you're impacting, influencing, motivating. You're holding space for creating value, growth, and opportunity, again, for yourself, your teams, your company, your stakeholders, and your community. Things to think about. What are, your, what are three of your top leadership characteristics? What is one behavior you want to change? What is one takeaway you can put into action today? And how might you build more trust? Any questions? And I also just want to say thank you, and I'll stop the slideshow. I'm open to having everybody come off a of mute if anybody wants to ask any questions. What was your one takeaway from today? Type it in the chat. Anybody? You have one takeaway from this presentation today? I wish I had more time with you because we would absolutely do some breakouts. We would come back together. We would discuss more. We would have open dialogue. Those are things that I would wish. Leadership is personal. Beautiful statement. Knowing what you are passionate is so important in making cognitive leadership. Yes. Leadership is an art. Yes. Yes. Yes, beautiful. 
Everyone struggles with different parts of being a leader and working with a team. Absolutely. And I want to speak to that really quick, you guys. What's really cool about that is everybody has their own stuff. I would, if you were my friend, I'd probably say it in a different way. But everybody has their own life going on and their own stuff. And how important is it to just be compassionate about that? How lovely is it as a leader to go, okay, you know what? This person might not be at the top of their game today, but what can their highest and best be today? And can I catch them doing something good today that will be beneficial and rewarding towards the productivity that we've got to have? That's a different mindset. That's a different approach with leadership. And that's where we're going these days with leadership and really helping everyone on the team, including ourselves, better manage those day-to-day -day things that we come up against. Yeah. Lori, you. might I even suggest for our personal journeys, therapy is essential. Love it. Mm -hmm. And yes, and I'm going to speak to that really quick. There is a continuum where coaching and professional coaching and, and people like myself with human resources, et cetera, there is a continuum and there is a point where it becomes clinical. And when it does, when that is recommended, do not let that hurt your heart. That is the very most important stage where you are absolutely on the road to healing, recovery, and becoming a very powerful person. You're going to learn even more about yourself. Mm -hmm. So beautiful statement. Thank you for that, Albert. Absolutely. And, and certified coaches know that, by the way. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much, Lori. And thank you so much for participating. Um, we'd like to thank Lori for presenting this afternoon. Um, thank you as well to all of the participants who have joined us today. At the conclusion of the summit, you will receive an email with a link to a survey. We ask that you please complete the survey at your earliest convenience to share some feedback about your learning experience today. At this time, we encourage you to transition to your next session using the Zoom link, which are located in the summit program. Thank you so very much, everyone. Thank you so much, Lori, and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you, Thank everyone. You. I put my information in the chat.